Hi, welcome back to Lipper's Fun Flows Insight Report. I'm Jeff Turnahoy. For the week ended May 6, 2015, we saw widespread outflows across every asset class except money market funds. Let's take a look at our macro groups and see where the activity was. Obviously, equity funds had a bad week with about $5.4 billion pulled from equity mutual funds. Taxable bond funds weren't any better, really. They had outflows of about $500 million. Municipal debt funds also sank into the red. And money market funds, the lone bright spot in terms of flows, taking in $4.6 billion this week. Well, the week got off to a bit of a rough start. There's lots of headwinds on some of the uh, um, economic indicators out there. The jobs report from ADP was a little disappointing. However, today we got word from the official U.S. government survey that things were not as bad as predicted. But we also faced some headwinds this week when uh, Fed Chair Janet Yellen decided to tell everybody that stocks were overpriced. That put a damper on people's spirits as well. So we saw lots of outflow activity on the equity side, both in terms of mutual funds and ETFs. So let's take a look at the mutual funds first and see how they did. Again, $5.4 billion in outflows was not a good week for them. We saw poor performance as well. They were down about 1.28% on a total returns basis. Uh, overall, investors were not enamored with domestic uh, equity funds. They were the source of their biggest outflows, accounting for about $6.1 billion, while the non-domestic side, think international and global products, actually took in about $710 million net. Now, the leading classification for equity mutual funds this week was large cap core funds. They took in about $394 million. What's surprising, though, is one of the losers this week, the worst outflow, was reserved for equity income funds, a close cousin to large cap value. Equity income funds had about $1.2 billion in inflows. Mid cap core funds uh, were a little bit farther behind, but not too far, $1.1 billion in outflows for them. So kind of a strange mix of outflow activities this week for equity mutual fund investors. Well, let's turn our attention to the next group, the uh, equity ETFs. They also suffered outflows this week, a total of $9.2 billion sucked out of their pockets. It was a risk off week. We saw investors uh, take money out of some of the largest plays in the equity ETF space. For example, uh, QQQ, uh, IWM, the Russell 2000, they both suffered severe outflows, as well as the Spider SPY with about $5.2 billion taken from it. There weren't too many bright spots, and where they were certainly couldn't uh, account for the outflows on the other direction. Uh, Spider Financial Services, XLF, was the week's uh, brightest spot for inflows, and it took in only about $322 million. Well, let's turn our attention now to bond funds, specifically mutual fund bond funds. Again, a bad week for them. They had over $500 million in outflows, a poor week of performance, too. Uh, we saw about 59 basis points in losses which is quite a bit uh, considering how well bonds have held up this year. Uh, we saw core plus uh, mutual funds take in the lion's share of activity, about $818 million. And after that, the inflows fall off rapidly. At the other end of the uh, flows table, high yield funds suffered outflows of $574 million. And international income funds also saw outflows, about $590 million for them. Uh, loan participation funds held up remarkably well given all this, uh, the gyrations in the market. Their outflows only amounted to about $52 million. Well, their peers on the equity, uh, I'm sorry, in the exchange traded space uh, didn't fare a whole lot better. Equity ET, I'm sorry, fixed income ETFs suffered $2.6 billion in outflows this week. This is their worst week of outflows in about five months. We have to go back to December of 2014 to find anything comparable. Uh, high yield funds, much as they were on the mutual fund side, were the uh, recipient of all the outflows. They suffered about $2.1 billion in, uh, in net outflows. Uh, HYG, the leader among all of them, with $1.6 billion in outflows. Long duration treasuries uh, also suffered quite a bit on the outflow side. Overall, that group saw outflows of $1.1 billion, while TLT, the monster uh, uh, treasury product out there, it had outflows of $736 million. So the flows for the group tended to follow where the flows for the biggest ones went. Next group to take a look at, municipal debt funds. They suffered outflows this week. 
uh, you know, it's the fourth week in the past six that they've suffered outflows. And if you look at the performance chart on the on, towards the right side of the table here, you see that performance is softening week after week after week. Five weeks now of pretty poor performance, starting off with one basis point loss, and then it was four and seven, and it just got worse and worse. And this week, uh, really not a whole lot to hang your hat on here. High yield municipal debt funds, which have been the biggest draw this year, well, they suffered outflows this week, about $303 million. There was very little single, a single state activity to speak of. The short plus the intermediate group, I bunched those all together. Uh, they had inflows this week about $194 million. So really not a whole lot of activity. It was either on the credit side or duration. Really no um, single state activity to speak of. The final group to look at, money market funds and the loan bright spot in terms of inflows this week. Uh, retail uh, uh, investors, they added about $2.2 billion. Uh, institutions added about 2.4. These are very small numbers between these groups, very light activity here. Can't exactly say that anyone's keeping their powder dry because we saw considerable outflows that swamped these numbers in other places. So overall, we saw a drain from the mutual fund and ETF communities this week as money did not get put to work on the cash side of things. Now, one bright spot as well for money market funds, this is their first inflow since March. So not a whole lot of uh, good news this week in terms of flows. We saw widespread outflows. The one little bit of uh, good news was just a little too underwhelming as well. Well, that'll do it for this week's analysis. Uh, please join us here next week uh, as we dissect the flows activity and mutual funds and ETFs. And join us online anytime at lipperusfundflows.com. Thanks for watching.